In this video, we're talking about how to factor a polynomial using grouping. And we call it grouping because we're going to group together terms that have something in common before we factor out that common value. So in this example, we have the polynomial abc minus 4c plus abx minus 4x. And if we look at this polynomial, we can see that the first two terms have a c in common. So we can go ahead and group those together. And the way that we group them is just put parentheses around them like this. And then we can see that the second two terms have an x in common. So we'll group those by putting parentheses around those two terms. Now what we want to do is factor out that common value. So these first two terms both have a c. So we're going to pull that c out in front of the parentheses. And we're going to say c times whatever's left over when we pull out the c. So pulling out the c from abc, we're just left with ab. Pulling out the c from negative 4c, we're just left with the negative 4. Same thing here. We have an x in common. So we pull out the x and we're just left with ab minus 4. At this point, we factored the polynomial, but we still have a common factor of ab minus 4 that we see in both terms. So what we need to do is factor that ab minus 4 out of the polynomial. So when we do that, we get ab minus 4. This is what we're going to factor out. And what's left when we take ab minus 4 out of each term? Well, if we look at this term and we take out the ab minus 4, we're just left with c. So we want to say, AB minus 4 times quantity C. We keep the plus here. And then when we look at the second term here, we have X times quantity AB minus 4. We take out the AB minus 4 and we're just left with the X. So we have C plus X. That's all that's left over. Now this is our final answer, but it's important to remember that when we factor a polynomial using grouping, there's very often multiple ways to group our terms together. So in this example, we group together the first two terms and the last two terms, but you may have noticed that there's another way to group these terms in particular. We could have grouped together the first term and the third term, ABC and ABX, because they both have an AB in common. We also could have grouped together this negative 4C and a negative 4x because they have a negative 4 in common. So let's go ahead and group them together that way and see what happens. So if that's the case, we're going to go this way with our example. We would have said abc plus abx. That's one group. Then we add to that our other group. We have negative 4c. It's really important to remember to keep the negative sign whenever we have one. So we have negative 4c and a negative 4x, so minus 4x. Now we want to pull out the value that we saw was in common. So we can pull an AB out of ABC and out of ABX. So we pull that AB out in front and we're just left with C plus X. Here we can pull out a negative four. So we'll get plus a negative four or just minus four. So minus four in the middle multiplied by the quantity C plus X. And we have a C plus X because we pull out the entire negative four, leaving us with just a positive X. So C plus X. And we factored, but now, just like before, we have this common factor left over of c plus x, which we see in both terms. So if we pull a c plus x out in front, what we're left with is just the ab from this first term, so quantity ab, and just the negative 4 from the second term, so minus 4. And you can see that we come up with the very same answer regardless of how we group the terms. Remember, just because these factors are multiplied together in the opposite order doesn't change the value. This answer here is the same as AB minus 4 times C plus X, which is the same as the answer we got the first time. So remember, the important thing is not how you group the terms, just that you group the terms such that each group has a common factor.